For Inside Carolina, I'm Taylor Vipolis, and you're listening to this podcast, which is a part of the Inside Carolina Podcast Network. So first off, thank you for being here. If you haven't already, be sure you subscribe or follow Inside Carolina wherever you get your podcasts or on YouTube so you never miss out on any of the content the team at IC puts out. It helps us out a ton and hardly takes any time. Speaking of support, we want to support the people that support us. So that's why I've got to remind everybody about Jimmy's Famous Seafood. The reason they wanted to sponsor this podcast is simple. They're owned and operated by Carolina fans. So not only do you get great seafood at a great price, but you're also supporting one of your own. It's a true win-win for everybody wondering. My go-to order is the famous gift box where you get two massive crab cakes, two kinds of crab soup, and a half pint of crab dip. Visit them online at jimmysfamousseafood.com and at checkout, use the promo code hashtag GDTBATH for free two-day shipping. That's promo code hashtag GDTBATH. All right, today we have a special guest joining me. We've got an Olympian in the house. It's former (laughs) UNC track and field star, Kenny Selman, who who will be competing in Tokyo for Team USA in the 400 meter hurdles. Kenny, first, thanks all for getting on here today and a big congratulations to you just for qualifying for the Olympic Games. Has it set in yet hearing that Olympian tag next to your name? <laughs> that is the, I mean, no, it has not. Um, it's just, it's still so weird. Like I actually just got someone um, very kindly gave me a gift and on the gift it said Kenny Selman Olympian. And I was like, this is weird. Like, why, like, this, like everybody's throwing this tag on it now. And I love it, um, but very much not not set in yet. But obviously, very proud and, and happy that that we're at this point. So thanks Kenny, for having me as well, Kenny. Looking at your family, your dad was an All American wrestler at Nebraska. I saw that your mom was a city champion in mixed doubles, and your brother was a team captain and starter at Bates College when they went to the Final Four at the D three level. Have sports always been a major part of your life and household growing up when you have that much athleticism under one roof? Oh, man, absolutely. I mean, um, first of all, my dad is one of nine um, kids and eight of them, eight of which are guys. There's one girl in the fam. And so all of them, no, that's not true. That is not true. All of them were not athletes, but the majority of them were athletes and yeah, and my dad, he was a beast. Um, mom, obviously, she's playing tennis now. She crushes it. Billy was a beast. Um, but it's really, I, I, my dad hates when I say that, you know, I got it all from them because he thinks it takes away from my hard work, which, which I don't, you know, I don't mind giving them credit. But I do say for sure is that the mentality that has been instilled within the household is where I get my mentality from. And the ability to kind of, you know, go through hard days, understand what it takes, all that is being in your face from an early age is, um, it, it helps out. And so I definitely will say that, you know, the family under that roof, we, we're getting some things done. A lot of competing, I can imagine. But <laughs> oh, how old were good. you when you started running track? Because it isn't a sport you necessarily think of when you have little kids playing soccer or t-ball or even like a flag, uh, flag version of football. Yeah, hundred percent. I mean, I, I, you know, I played everything. I played football, basketball, basketball, my first love. I um, played soccer, played lacrosse, um, everything. And the, all the coaches were, they were like, gosh, like I told my dad, they said, Kenny's just fast. Like you should, you should, <laughs> like, you should just put him in track, see what happens in track. And so um, we did it and, you know, the results took care of themselves. And I got to say like, tra- I mean, you know, I was probably 11 when I really started to get it going, but I didn't get serious about it until probably, you know, I mean, sophomore year of high school and kind of just stuck with it. And the results started to prove like, okay, you might have a, you might have something here. You know, you're, you're better at track than you are at basketball, which was unfortunate, but, um, (laughs) but we stayed with it. And so, yeah, I've been going for for quite some time now. Give me the scouting report of Kenny's basketball game. What was, what was your, what was your game like? First of all, I was the leading scorer for the Pace Academy basketball team my junior and almost halfway through my senior year. Like, I'm just saying, I was nice. You were a bucket getter. I wasn't pulling up from the three, but I was going to the hole. And I was, (laughs) you know, they were looking for me on the outlet. (laughs) So starting track when you were around 11, at what point did you kind of realize how talented you were and how much potential you had in the sport? Yeah, um... 
So I made my first USA team in 2013. And so I've, I've been on five USA teams, two or one was a youth team, two were junior teams. And now, including the Olympics, I've been on two senior teams. And so that first team in 2013, 14 year, um, is when I kind of realized, like, I was like, okay, you know, they, like when you get on the team, they, they tell you, look around, look who's on this team. You'll see these people for the rest of your career. You know, like you guys are an elite level and you guys have obviously proven to be athletes that can compete when it matters. And so at that time, right before, right before college, kind of, I realized that you know, I might be able to, I might have something, you know, a real career here. Speaking of some of that talent in high school, you were ranked as the number one hurdler in your class. You were a seven-time state champion, three-time All-American in the 400 hurdles. You were the 2014 national champion in the 400 hurdles, and you captained the 2014 World Junior USA team. With all of those accolades, how did you decide that Carolina was the place for you? Oh, gosh, I love that question. <laughs> oh, that was so easy. Like, so I, uh, like you said, I was fortunate enough to, I could have gone anywhere I wanted. Um, I, I took, I took three visits. I, I, I was going to take five, but I took my first one at Texas A&M. Um, cool school, didn't revive me, whatever. Um, FSU was my second visit. Very, very fast track school at the time. And I was, you know, I was kind of wooed by the whole track vibe. Um, but didn't love the the whole school. I don't know. It, was, it wasn't the whole package. And then my third visit was Carolina. And I mean, it was just so easy. Like, like I, I, when I got on Canvas, I was like, okay, wait, this is this is exactly where I want to be. I mean, Carolina has, I think there's three aspects to, you know, to school. I think academics, athletics, and social. And I just don't think there literally is anywhere else better in the world than those, than those mixes at the highest level in Carolina. I mean, you know, athletics, unreal, academics, unreal, and the social life is what you want it to be. So I, Carolina, it just had everything, it had everything. Yeah. I feel, I feel like you hear that all the time uh, uh, with athletes. Like the second they step on campus on a visit, it's like, you almost know right away. Yeah. It, it's easy. Like it's, it, it, I mean, th th there was no doubt and I, and I would do it 10 times again. You often hear about how tough the adjustment is going from high school to college in really any sport. Do you remember that ever being a challenge for you? Because from the outside looking in, it seems like your jump was smooth and pretty natural where you were able to just hit the ground running. No, no pun intended. Yeah, yeah. No, I, um, I definitely had an adjustment to make. I think that. So excuse me, my, um, my high school you know, to speak candidly, like I, there was a jump from my high school to UNC. The athletic program was very, very different. Now I had run in summer, in summer track and field teams that were more elite. Um, but the jump was like the teams that I, the teams that I had been on was significantly different from, you know, my 1A private school to, you know, UNC. And so as far as the team dynamic was, that was a big jump. But then athletically, I mean, I was thrown into, you know, so the, 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 what are we, they won, they won ACCs and they were all American, the four by four, my senior year of college, I mean, senior high school. So when I jumped in, I was, you know, on the relay that had been established at Carolina for a long time. And I was like, what is going on? Like these guys are, I, I was not ready for that. I, I had the slowest leg each time they're throwing me on my third leg. Um, those guys were blazing. And so I like mentally, I had to adjust to go from being like number one guy to just not being them one guy anymore. And so that was tough, but, you know, Carolina and the guys on the team were just perfect. I mean, they, you know, they took me in, in, in their unique ways. Um, it was, <laughs> nothing was ever smooth. Um, but I will say that I think on paper, my adjustment looks pretty smooth because of how good of teammates and how good of coaching we had at Carolina. But, you know, internally it was tough it, it was a lot going on I had to I had to figure things out very quickly because those guys were not waiting for me it's crazy to hear how you could have a humbling experience like that when you come in as, as a freshman because you're looking at your accomplishments at Carolina you're a five-time All-American a three-time ACC champion you're a multiple school record holder and you also received the Patterson medal in 2018 which is 
the top athletic honor given at the University of North Carolina. What did that mean to you to where you're now seeing everything you've worked so hard for recognized at the college level? Yeah, I think um, the, the Patterson Medal was the coolest award I've gotten so far in like my life. Um, because one big thing that track and field athletes struggle with is the, the respect and the acknowledgement that we feel as though we deserve that we don't get. And especially at a school like Carolina, I mean, you've got, and I, I can go on a rant about this, but, and, I, and I have before actually, in one of my business school classes, uh, improv class, we like had to go on a rant on something you were passionate about and it had to be unscripted, like unplanned. And so my rant was about the fact that, you know, at Carolina, and at, I, was, I can speak for Carolina because I was obviously there, but this happened everywhere that, there are athletes that walk these canvas, like all these canvases, like, you know, lacrosse players, track athletes, um, swimmers who have reached heights of, of, you know, significant level, you know, USA teams, the best in the world at what they do and get no respect compared to the basketball players who I mean, people kiss the ground they walk on. <laughs> and so I, I lived with Nate Britt one year and we um and I was just I it, it was just a mess. It was a mess, but it was so funny because I would always I would always tell him like, bro, I'm so much better than you at what I do than what you do, and like and no one knows. It. <laughs> um, so but we always were joking, but obviously the um the, to get the Patterson Medal and to to feel as though the school finally acknowledged, you know a greatness that I felt as though I, I obviously was helped to get to that level, but I really just wanted to represent the track team and represent, you know, track and field itself. And so to get that medal, the highest honor UNC gives an athlete was just so cool. Um, and I was very thankful for that and felt as though finally we had, we had, you know, got to the, got to be on the football field during halftime when we deserved to be there for the, you know, last 15 years. <laughs> this is the first time I've had a uh, track person on the podcast. So I think, I think this is going to start the trend now, <laughs> maybe every week I'm going to have a track. Well, person. Yes, well, we got a lot to say. <laughs> when you were trying to qualify for the Olympics, you're going through three grueling rounds where you have to be near flawless with your execution and your overall race plan. For the average person, how would you explain how tough that is and how do you stay locked mentally over that course of time? Yeah. Um, so, you know, to, to break it down, the, it, I mean, it's tough. So, like, th th it's what you train for. You train for the ability to go or, or to not be tired after running as hard as you can. So, like, at practice, you'll, you know, do a full out rep. And then your coach will say, okay, you get 10 minutes and then do it again. Cause I need you to be able to feel, I need your body to understand what that feels like to like do it again and do it again, and then do it again. And the crazy part is like, so to, to an average person, like it's like run as fast as you can. And tomorrow you've got to run even faster than that. And then the next day, if you want to make your dreams come true, you've got to run even faster than that. And so that part was, um, was just crazy. And then, you know, to speak even more candidly about the, about the round itself, like what people didn't really see was like, I was nervous. I was so nervous for that final round because I was in the check-in tent and I was like, like, I was trying not to think about the fact that everything I had ever done and worked for is coming down to this next five minutes right here and what happens in the next five minutes will, will like will be pivotal. And so having that pressure on you is, is something that I think I've never felt before. And, and I don't know how to relate that exactly to um, something that people do every day, but that, that, that's just what I was going through my head. And it, it, was, um, it was wild. It was, it was absolutely wild. I, I read an interview that you did that before races, you'll listen to, to speeches from someone like former president Barack Obama, or you watch a Beyonce performance. Oh, God, what, that was... <laughs> what is it about those two in particular that seems to help you draw inspiration from? I gotta stop saying that. <laughs> um, so, it's, you know, whether it's Beyonce, whether it's Obama, you know, President Barack Obama, 
it's it's the I try to make myself feel small. Like I, I want to feel like what I'm doing is not a big deal. And like how I do that is just like if you know President Barack Obama can go out there and speak to the world and, and be absolutely flawless, then I can I can go out here and do what I've been training for for so long. If Beyonce can come out there and crush Coachella, like I can <laughs> I can go out here and run some hurdles. So that's what I do. I try to make myself like you know just take it a take it a step down and make it easier. But it really helps. I, I would suggest it to anybody who's going on a bigger stage. I imagine you walking to the check-in tent with your AirPods in, phone in hand, just doing like the, the single lady dance all the, all the way there. Is that is that what it's like, the beehive over there? Look, if people knew what I had going on with my AirPods, you would just be, you would not even <laughs> understand. You would not understand. Trust me. I, <laughs> yep. Yep. That's you, it. Uh, you competed in the 2016 Olympic team trials where you placed seventh and you didn't qualify for the Olympics, but what do you think you learned from that experience that helped you prepare for this time around? Yeah. That, I mean, there's something to be said about going into like an arena like that and, and doing it like kind of for fun in a sense, before you go in there and actually, you know, have a, have a real chance and make it like when I was, when I went to 16, like I wasn't supposed to make the team. I was, I was just going there, you know, happy to be there. And so I was able to learn and kind of feel the vibes and like, like these guys are not playing, understand what the rounds kind of feel like. It, it helped me just understand what it was going to be like. And now obviously coming back this year, I knew what I had, I knew what it was going to be like, but also knew that I had to actually like execute at a, highly, a way different level. Um, so it just helped me kind of relax a little bit. At the trials, not only, did you come in second to qualify for Team USA? You also ran a personal best time in the process, running a full 400 meters with hurdles in the way in a blazing 4808. <laughs> when you cleared that final hurdle coming into that last stretch, what was kind of going through your mind? When I tell you I was running for my life, I was running for my life. I was like, Kenny. They are, I, they, I just knew, I just knew that they were coming as fast as they could behind me and I could not misstep at all. And so when I, when I crossed, I mean, it wasn't over till it was over. When I crossed the 10th hurdle, I was like, okay, like you, these guys like mess up if you want to, but they're coming. And so when I crossed the line, um, just for me, I was, I just, I fell to my knees. Actually, I was like, this is, this is, and I couldn't, I, I didn't really believe it. Cause when you, when you're running, you don't really, I mean, your peripherals work pretty well um, and you can feel people on you, but you can, you can miss somebody too. And so I was like, I didn't, I didn't feel anything until I saw my name show up in second. And I was like, Whoa, that was, that was wild. How I was just going to follow that up with just asking how conscious of, of like how fast you are running during the actual race. Like when you're running and you're going over the hurdles, are you like, this feels like it's going to be a personal <laughs> best right now? Yeah, that's a good question. So I, so Rye Benjamin, the guy who won is, is incredibly fast. Like he, he's unreal. Um, nothing but respect for him. We've been racing each other for a long time now. He's great. I knew him being on my inside, I had to get out. He was in lane four. I was in, or, he was in four, I was in five. And I was like, okay, like, I mean, he, he's, he's going to fly. I think it was six. I was six, he was five. Um, he's going to fly out of the box. And so I was preparing for him to be on me by like hurdle three or hurdle four. <laughs> and in the race, no kidding, I got to hurdle five. And I was like, I don't see Rye yet. And I was like, I don't know why I don't see Rye yet. Um, but I must be moving. And so I told myself that. And like that's kind of, you know, things like that you can kind of gauge where you are going. I mean, you can't, I can't sit here and say that I knew at that moment I was on, you know, a faster pace than I had ever done before. Um, but I knew that it was going to require like a new ton of, type of energy system. And like, obviously you don't, you don't run for the time, you run for your like strategy. And so, but I will say there was one, like in that race, when Rye was not only by hurdle, you know, three or four, I was like, oh gosh, I'm moving. And sure enough, he showed up that hurdle seven and eight, but I was like, oh, can you just hold on, just hold on. 
<laughs> what was the immediate reaction like when you step off the track to what I'd have to imagine is thousands of text messages, yeah. mentions on social media from former teammates, coaches, friends, family, and probably people you've hardly, if at all, even ever met. I mean, the amount of, I mean, honestly, I had, I had 637 messages, like text messages, and like 30 of them were group messages. So they were all like true messages. And I'd say 50 of them, I didn't have the number. And I was, I was like, I, I had to be like, thank you. I don't know who this is though. So just let me know who you are. Um, but that, like, that's the best part, I think. I think the coolest part is kind of feeling the love and, and feeling the support from everyone that you've, you know, ever crossed. And, and the cool thing to me was that people weren't just saying like, congrats. People were saying, you know, like, like, I've seen you grind. Like, I understand, like, you deserve this. You know, it was, it was, it was like, it was like 600 letters. And so it was, um, that was the coolest thing. And then social media was just a joke. I, I couldn't, I, I just couldn't even keep up with the social media, which, which is fine. That's, you know, whatever. Um, but that was, that was the best part. I, I, I thoroughly enjoyed, you know, getting back to everybody and seeing all the love. Cause I feel like that's, I mean, that's, that's why I do it. I don't do it. I mean, you know, Tracks grueling. It's very hard. I do it because people believe in me. So, how many of the texts were from like John from third grade? <laughs> <laughs> hey, Kenny, remember me? Congrats. Right, a lot, a <laughs> lot. And honestly, it, it was, <laughs> I had a lot of those too, but there were more like family. People were like, they were like, so like, I'm, I'm your second cousin and I know your dad and, you know, me and your dad, I'm like, no, you know, you are not. The, no, the not. family tree grew about 10 sizes that day. 10 sizes at least. <laughs> yeah. People, the, people come out the woodworks. How do you balance the high of realizing the achievement of a lifelong dream and qualifying for the Olympics, but now in a pretty short turnaround, having to focus on the next race in Tokyo, which is going to be the most important race you've ever run. Yeah, yeah. Um, it's a lot. Well, I, it's a lot. I mean, Taylor, honestly, like I, I was so focused on the trials because the USA team is the hardest team to make out of all the, you know, Olympic teams, all the other countries. We have the most depth. Like we, I mean, we go deep into our into our um, events, and so. I wasn't even thinking about Tokyo. Like I, I couldn't even like fathom getting excited or like preparing for that race. Like we were, we were preparing for Tokyo, I mean, for the trials. And so, you know, now that I've made it, I've had to kind of like, you know, realize like, you know, like, like after everything calmed down, I was like, okay, wait, so now we got to actually go to Tokyo and run, um, which is just, it's just, it's, it's wild. Um, but you know, the balance, I think, is something that I've kind of done my whole life. I'm, I'm a big, I'm a big, big um, advocate for work hard, play hard. Um, and I definitely, you know, my the last three weeks since the trials or like, you know, two and whatever, um, I have not wavered in the intensity of my training. Like my, my, my training is still just as intense as it's always been. Like I just had practice earlier today and, um, and I'm feeling good. And, and I'm feeling ready and I'm feeling prepared because my coach is brilliant. Um, he, he's awesome. But um, so, so as far as the track side goes, like I, I don't, you know, I, like when I step on the track, I'm kind of a different person. Like I have to just kind of, I have to lock in in a certain way. Um, but, you know, I also like celebrate. And so I, I, I had a, you know, my parents had a send off party for me, which was just dope. I had a ton of family friends come in and, um, and it, it was awesome. And then I also like, you know, I, 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 I do my fair share of celebrating. So I, I've had a good time. And, um, but I also, I think it's important. I think, you, I think you have to celebrate it and acknowledge that it happened. And then, you know, when you get into your workspace, which is the track, you know, understand that there's a next mission at hand. So it's kind of the fine and balancing, you know, the work hard, play hard. With the name, image, and likeness now that college athletics has, I saw your Twitter bio. It said, Waffle House enthusiast, do you think a college Kenny would have got the Waffle House bag? I mean, honestly, I, I, I think about that often. Um, and it's, it's um, you know, Waffle House obviously is jo a joke, but like, um, I, I mean, there were opportunities that, you know, were presented to me 
on a very, very small level, like wh wh whether they were, you know, restaurants, um, friends, businesses who like wanted to have me represent them in some way. And they were, they were willing to pay like, like those things did come about and they, and they were real. I don't think that I would have the level obviously as those, you know, illustrious basketball players, but, <laughs> um, but um, there were definitely opportunities there. And I, I am, I am excited to see what these kids can do with it. Cause I mean, I think there's money to be made and, I, and I'm, I'm just, I'm happy. Wish that I was, you know, I don't know what I was in school now, but I, I think it's cool that they are at least getting this opportunity. Is Olympian Kenny still trying to chase the uh, Waffle House bag? Olympian Kenny chasing a lot of bags. <laughs> <laughs> He's chasing a lot of bags right now. Waffle House, Waffle House, they're they're giving your boy some support. Not not everything that I want, but they're giving they're definitely giving support. So you know, free meals will take it. Kenny, that's all I have for you, but just wanted to say thanks again for making the time today and wishing you safe travels and best of luck to you as you compete in Tokyo. Really looking forward to watching you. Yeah, Taylor, I appreciate it, bro. Anything for you.